Let me tell you guys a quick story. So three years ago, I built my first ever to-do list application using JavaScript. And I was genuinely proud about that project. But looking back now, I honestly laugh because I had no clue what the hell an API was. I had the passion, but no direction. Fast forward to today, I've built real apps that real people use, landed an internship, and people keep asking, how did you do it? And the truth is that it's not magic, right? There were four specific things I know I did that helped me, and that's what we're going to be talking about in today's video. The first thing I did, which frankly required the mindset shift, was building to learn and not learning to build. And I know that kind of sounds backwards, but hear me out. When I started learning React, I didn't take any crash course, you know, the typical crash course people usually take. I was just basically building random applications using the OG React. You know, back then when React was just class components. Yeah, back then. And for the times where I got stuck, I basically Googled it. And that's how I learned about use states, use effects, lifting up states, and every other thing about React. And I only learned those things because I needed it. Now, here's the thing. Most people try to do it the other way around. They spend weeks watching tutorials, taking notes, telling themselves that they're going to build something when they feel ready. But the truth is that you're never going to feel ready because you always feel like you don't know enough because tutorials don't end. There's always one more video, one more course, and that cycle kills momentum. But when you flip that mindset, when you build first, something clicks. It, it forces you to solve real problems and you're no longer memorizing code anymore. You're actually applying it. And you're not just watching someone else build a web application. You're actually struggling through it yourself and that struggle is where the actual learning happens. Think of a personal problem in your life. It could be something as simple as tracking your expenses or tracking your workouts. Just pick something simple and build it. And you don't need to go watch a tutorial or know how it works before you start. Just start and let your questions guide your learning. You will learn more in two weeks doing this than watching a 10 hour tutorial. And the funny thing is I'm not even exaggerating. The second tip is something I can personally vouch for and say help. And a lot of other tech creators can also testify to this as well. And that is teaching what you're learning. And I don't mean you creating a YouTube channel like any of us did, but just hear me out. When I built Scriblo, I made a five minutes long video that nobody asked for talking about the algorithm that recommended articles to users. And I remember recording that video, it was completely unscripted. And as I was recording the video, I was like, oh, that doesn't sound right. I realized that I made so many errors in that algorithm that if I had not recorded that video, I would have not realized. And that interaction alone helped me identify problems in the project I had already put into production. And that helped me fix it fast and also learn fast. And most of you guys already know this by now. Whenever I learn something new or something cool, the first thing I do is either make a video about it tweet it or sometimes I make a LinkedIn post about it and of course the intent is to always share it with you guys but what that also does is it reinforces my own understanding of that thing and most of you guys need to realize that before you can teach someone something it requires you to slow down unpack it and make sure you actually understand it yourself if you think about it right professors teach the same class over and over again for years and every single semester they get the opportunity to teach that class it helps them understand that topic better and eventually it will get to a point where they don't need the slides to teach that class anymore same thing applies to you if you dedicate two days from your week to teach someone or make a twitter post or a linkedin post about something you worked on you'll be surprised how quickly that turns into muscle memory you can literally go and do this right after watching this video go make a linkedin post or a twitter post or if you're brave enough you can record a short tiktok talking about the stuff you're learning it will help you build your network get feedback and most importantly help you remember the third thing which actually took me some time to figure out was never code alone like always always try to get feedback and back then i was thinking why would anyone want to review my baby project but i was wrong i used to be part of this developer discord channel where people post their projects github repos and have other developers go review it so i posted the repo for one of the news websites i was building back then called the cincinnati times and honestly i wasn't expecting anyone to go review my projects because there were hundreds of projects being posted on that channel daily but someone actually reviewed it and pointed out that I wasn't using environment variables in my projects. I was literally hard coding every single thing possible, including my API secrets and private keys. Me as a beginner developer back then, I was like, 
what's the big deal? I don't see any problem in this. But that tip alone made me go review what he mentioned about environment variables and that made me start thinking like a real developer building real projects for real world use cases. One of my life philosophies is I don't know everything and every single encounter I have is an opportunity for me to learn something new and in my opinion that same thing applies to everyone else and I don't care what level you are in your career. There's always something new you could learn. You could be a senior developer and have a junior developer teach you something that you've never heard about before. It's very possible and I've seen that happen. No matter what level you are in your career, always try to have someone review your code because developers, we all think towards achieving the same goal. We all think towards solving the same problem, but we all take different routes. And ideally, one route will always be better or more efficient than the other route. And having someone else review your code can help you find more efficient ways to solve your problems. And the really cool thing is that if you experience that same problem in the future, you would always remember the most efficient way to do it. I don't know how else to say it, like always, always ask for feedback. It's going to save you from going through that constant loop of bad coding practices. All right, guys, real quick, before we move on to the next thing, let's get a quick word from today's sponsor, Bitrix24. If you're like me, you've probably experienced how important information can quickly get scattered, messy, or just plainly overwhelming, especially when you're dealing with multiple teams or projects. That's where the sponsor of today's video comes in, Bitrix24. With Bitrix24 Knowledge Base, you can transform your scattered information into one centralized hub, making it incredibly easy for you to organize and categorize effectively. Bitrix24 Knowledge Base is a great place for you to securely store all kinds of content, including how-tos, articles, documentations, checklists, and any other useful content. You can co-edit documents seamlessly and share them with your team. You can securely store critical employee data, set granular permissions to ensure that sensitive files are only visible to the right people. With Bitrix24, you can effortlessly manage all your corporate knowledge in one place. No more endless searching or switching between multiple platforms. Bitrix24 even offers a free mobile app so that way you can stay organized and productive on the go. Let Bitrix24 help you sort and organize your data for a secure and stress-free workflow. Click the link in the description to learn more and register for a free Bitrix24 account. Thanks to Bitrix24 for sponsoring today's video. I always save the not so interesting ones for last. Now, this one is not sexy, but it's a game changer. Practice the boring stuff. Now hold on, before you click off, hear me out. I always hated and avoided data structures and algorithm for so long because it felt really hard and pointless. It was so boring and frankly, I didn't see how it helped me become a better developer. But once I started doing one problem a day, just one, I felt more confident. Not confident that I could outcode Primagen or confident that I could go build the next Google search. I felt more confident that I could walk into a technical interview and brute force my way through it. Which is really important if you ever want to get a job as a software engineer because most companies nowadays idolize the lead code style interview. Now, no one is saying you should go grind lead code 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. You can start with easy problems like reversing a string or finding duplicates in an array and just 15 minutes a day adds up pretty quickly and it goes a long way. Lead code is just one example of the boring stuff you can practice. There are so many other boring practices in software engineering you could practice like writing test cases or writing documentations. Bruh, I don't think there's anyone that still writes documentation word for word like they used to. Your life must suck. These are all boring tasks that are now being automated by AI, and this is something you can practice, and if you're good enough, during an interview, that's a skill you have that the other guy most definitely does not have. Eight times out of 10, companies will always pick someone that has additional skill sets, even though the company doesn't have any practical need for that skill. It's like you going to go buy a car that has a sunroof that you know very well you would never open because you're always blasting the AC. One more feature, one more skill set won't hurt. And that's pretty much it, and these aren't just tips. These are the exact steps that took me from being a beginner who had no clue what an API was to being someone who currently has a software engineering internship, someone who builds projects that real people use, and honestly just having a lot more fun while coding. If you start doing one of these this week, you'll be ahead of 80% of the people that keep saying they want to get better but never take action. I'm always here to help if any of you guys have questions, feel free to DM me on Instagram. I'm pretty active on Instagram so I always check my DMs. Let me know in the comment section if any of these tips resonates with you and don't forget to subscribe if you found this helpful. I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace.